we're going to talk about and show you a simple little formula so that you can pay for college now and how to locate scholarships and free money without stress, fear, and confusion. And uh, I'm so passionate about this because my goal tonight, and I've, it's been amazing as we were uh, promoting for this webinar and promoting for this event tonight, there were so many people that reached out to me and said, wow, Kansas, I'm, I'm so excited that you have decided to do this because I have been looking for something to help me finance my, my college education. So tonight, my goal is to simply give you hope and give you a practical plan. I wanna give you hope and a practical plan. Now, uh, tonight, if you stay until the end of this webinar, I have really, I have a big gift that I want to give a few people on uh, this call tonight. So if you're here tonight and uh, stay to the end, we have some, a lot of great information, but I got some really cool gifts that I want to give away tonight. Now, if you're here, if you guys would, I just want to find out um, who do we have on the call? Do we have students? Are you a parent? Are you in high school? Are you in college? Are you returning as a student? Just let me know over in the chat room. Are you a student, parent? There we go. Student, parent, returning adult. Let me know over in the chat room here. Welcome, Tammy. Welcome to the to the um, to the webinar tonight. Student and parent. Thank you. Thank you. I've been knowing Belva for a long time. Hello, Belva. Aunt with a nephew in high school. Awesome. High school and dual credit student. Thank you. Thank you. Anytime I'm looking over here, I'm, I'm looking at my, uh, my chat box, and I'll put my, my chat box up here so you guys can don't think I'm looking at two screens at the same time, which I am. But honestly, you can't see me. You can see just the <laughs> you can see uh, the chat area. Thank you so much. Goals Master Program, faculty at Virginia Tech. Thank you, Jasmine Brown. I was in Blacksburg uh, two years ago, and I would definitely love to come back. Welcome, Kaya, uh, Miss Flowers. Thank you for being a student. Well, tonight we're gonna we're gonna get right into it. What makes this webinar tonight? Um, what makes it different? What makes today different? I believe today is different because you're taking a step to gain new information. I absolutely believe that when there's new information, things change, right? So I'm going to give you some information tonight, but information isn't powerful unless you take action. So I'm going to give you information today, but I want you to make a decision today that you're going to take action. Now, if you're in the chat room, you say, hey, can't. If you give the information, I'm going to take action. Let me know in the chat room. Sarah, love it, love it. I just want a commitment from you because, you know, I realize that your time is precious. And because your time is precious, I want to make sure that I deliver great information. Now, This little guy that was born in the city of Atlanta, and you can see there that I, I grew up with a phone in my hand. Yes, that was the very first iPhone. You get it? <laughs> That's pretty cool, right? That was the first original iPhone. And I grew up and I found myself uh, just being a normal kid. You know, I go to the beach and all the ladies love me. <laughs> Well, hold a minute, hold on. As I look at this picture, those are a few guys. But you can see that I am a uh, little fine, sexy black man. And over the years, my mom and dad, my mom popped me out of her belly. And um, my parents taught me a few things. And number one, they taught me the importance of education. And this is a picture of me when I believe I was five years old at my kindergarten graduation.
people. And one of the things that my mom and dad impressed upon me is the importance of education. You know, as you think about it, as a young kid, the only thing you could do was go to school. And I've been so blessed to go to school for 25 years. Yes, 25 years. This is a, a picture of me when I was in high school in, uh, in the area of Decatur, Georgia. I attended Southwest DeKalb High School there. And uh, as you can see, I was an honor student because I learned a few things. I learned a few tricks. I learned uh, how when you mess up, I've learned how to continue on and uh, learned that at Southwest DeKalb High School. From Southwest DeKalb High School, I, I moved on to college at Norfolk State University in Norfolk, Virginia. And that's uh, myself and my roommate, Sam. And we were in a honors program together. And in this honors program, we were in a science program called the NEMAS. And uh, with the NEMAS program, uh, one of the things that was you know, super duper cool for us was that we had the opportunity to really spend time with each other, but also be able to get to know now because I realized that when you go to college, when you pursue a, a, a college degree, co the college degree itself is not the thing that's going to cause you to be successful. It's going to help uh, give you certain opportunities whereby you can now make some decisions in life. You know, with my college degree, I was able to, you know, go into certain science labs and laboratories because I had this key called BS degree in chemistry. So regardless of what you're doing right now, you want to ask yourself, what keys in life do you need to open up certain doors? So after getting a BS degree, BS degree there at uh, Norfolk State University, I went on to uh, transition to Lehigh University where at Lehigh University, I received a Master of Science degree uh, there. And um, while I was at Lehigh, one of the cool things happened there. I heard something from a good friend of mine by the name of Les Sperling. And Les Sperling said this to me. He said, Cantus, if you want to earn more in life, then learn more. Become a perpetual student. Yeah, become a perpetual student. Become a person that is consistently learning and working on their craft. After leaving Lehigh University, ended up um, receiving another master's degree there at Georgia Tech. And the reason I'm showing you these pictures is because I'm showing you, yeah, you're not just hearing from somebody that talks about college funding, but I've actually done it. And after receiving these three degrees, I've been so blessed to not pay a single penny to do so. And I'm not bragging, but I'm just testifying to the blessings that have happened into my life. And I'm just testifying to uh, the principles and people before me who have placed a few seeds in my life that showed me, Cantus, you can be whatever you wanna be, you can do whatever you wanna do, you can have whatever you wanna have, and you can do that and also there are resources to make that happen. After uh, leaving Georgia Tech, I was so blessed to work at NASA Langley Research Center where my degree and my, my degrees opened up the opportunity for me to work at NASA as a research scientist. And um, becoming a research scientist, that exposed me to new opportunities. It exposed me to a new way of thinking. It exposed me to science, technology, engineering, and math. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity working at NASA. Uh, specifically, I worked on aircraft and space shuttles and rockets, and I worked with materials uh, for those. Later on with my scientific degree, I worked at a company called Seba Vision. Now, if anybody who's on this call tonight, on this webinar, and you wear contact lenses, I want to personally say thank you. You know, if, any, if you're in the chat room tonight and you wear contact lenses, thank you, because uh, my college experience opened up the doorway to teach me how to be a scientist. And because of that, I was able to 
um, land a great job with Seba Vision where I learned a few things and developed a few products and those products were now used to solve problems in our industry. So here's the cool thing about life. Whether you are in college, whether you are in a career or whether you're starting a business, they want you to solve problems. Yes, they want you, they pay you to solve problems. So if you can solve problems, then they want to invest in you because they realize that you are now, you're an asset to the company. But it all started with my education. So tonight I'm going to get down into uh, some details here about how to pay for college. And again, I'm not only talking about this, but I've done it and I want to help you do it. Now, uh, thank you, Kayla. Kayla says that, uh, I guess you wore contact lenses. Now, um, here's one thing I ask as we progress. If you have the television on, I want you to turn uh, the television off. If you have the radio on, or if you have some other social media sites open, you know, if you can just go ahead and minimize those. If you have your cell phone open, go ahead and minimize those. And if you're ready to go deeper in this information, I'm about to get into some, to some, some core things. So if you have a pen or piece of paper nearby, use it to take notes. But if you can, just let me know that you're ready in the chat room, because uh, I'm about to just really lay things out. I'm about to show you some of these steps, I'm going to show you some of these strategies, going to really uh, dive right into it. So if you're in the chat room tonight, just let me know. If you're ready, if you got a pen or pencil and you've uh, removed all the distractions, and we're going to go deeper here. Sorry, I can't type. Yes, I'm ready. Good stuff. I'm ready. Well, here we go. So here is why I'm so passionate about this subject tonight. Number one is because of uh, these individuals right here. Here's my mom and my dad, you know, and you can tell that I, I had a big head and uh, I love my, my mother. She is a huge part of my life. I love spending time with my father. And the reason these two people are so important to me is because a few years ago, I needed to borrow some money from my dad. And I was so ashamed to borrow some money from my dad and my dad said to me, like, son, why are you tripping about asking me for money? I'm like, dad, well, I didn't necessarily want to ask you for money. He said, son, you've been a blessing to us because we didn't have to pay for your college education. So everything that we've laid aside for you with your college education, even though, you know, it wasn't a lot, we still were able to hold on to that. So thank you, son, for doing your part in school. And as a result of that, it's okay. You know, if money get tight sometime and you need a loan or you need some money to do whatever, it's okay because of the fact that you helped us there. And so I love spending time with my dad. This is my, my brother and I hanging out with my, with my mom. Now, my brother, he is a musician and my brother ended up going to Berkeley College of Music and he, he completed his degree at Berkeley College of Music. He's a professional pianist and he has a music school. Now, I'm bringing my brother up because I'm going to make reference to my brother. Again, here's a picture of uh, my family, I, and my sister. Uh, there we were at my sister's PhD graduation. Her name is Dr. Mia Simmons. And I, I share this information because I, I love my mom and dad. They're you know, my best friends. They are my biggest fans. They're my biggest supporters. They're my critiques. And Everything I do, honestly, is because I want to please my, my mom and my dad because they've just been that helpful to me. And here's what I want to ask you tonight. With your college degree, with the thing that you're working on, what's your big why? Yeah, what's your big why? In the chat room, let me know why do you want to complete your college degree or complete your education? You see, for me, I wanted to complete my college degree because I wanted to make my mom and dad proud. Yeah, that's, that was my big why when I first started out. I wanted to make my mom and dad proud. And then after I got my college degree, and even while I got my college degree, my why changed. I wanted to help 
serve companies and corporations by helping them develop great products that could bring them a profit. And I wanted to develop products that had the potential to change the world. So initially when I was going into college, my why was to please my mom and my dad. And then as I got into college and I got into my major, my why changed again because now I wanted to help solve the problems of um, companies and corporations that was doing good work out in the world. And I wanted to create products that can help the entire world to help our society. And let me know, uh, let me know where you, what's your big why? Here's the cool thing today. I, I travel and I do these things because I want to help people. I travel the country and I speak and I, I want to help people. So tonight, yes, I've done a lot of things right, but I've also done a lot of things wrong. And the one thing that I've done wrong is that I haven't systematized how I was able to pay for college on full scholarships. And so I'm making that right tonight. And I'm doing that by helping individuals like you. And when I think about my life, when I think about the things that I have going on, I want to make sure that um, I'm giving my all tonight, giving my all in life. So I want to make things right because here's the reality of it. My, my beautiful sister, she has about $80,000 worth of student loans. My brother, he had to pay student loans. And there were some things that I gained that I didn't do right. And I want to make that right tonight by helping individuals like you. So tonight, I'm going to show you how to pay for college with scholarships, free money, and all the funding you can find. Now, here's the foundation principle that I want you to realize. Nothing in life just happens. And college funding won't happen either. You have to be intentional. Yes, the information I'm going to give you, you have to be intentional. You have to take the time to be intentional about looking for your college funds. Number two foundation, education is not the key to success. You are. So what this means is this. Yes, you can obtain a, a bachelor's degree or a master's degree or PhD degree. And those are actually certificates. That's a piece of paper. That's a certificate. That's an accreditation to say, okay, this person has completed their education. But if you really want to be successful in life, if you really want to make some great impact, then it's up to you. Now, if you want to open up any door in life, as I mentioned earlier, earlier, it's going to take some keys. What keys do you have or that you want to obtain to open up some of the doors that you want to obtain? And that is so key. That is so important. Now, as I, as I back up, I want you to think about your goal. What's your goal? For me, as a high school student, I had one goal. My one goal was to go to college. And I wasn't really sure about how my mom and dad, what they did with their money. I, I didn't know. But I told myself that I wanted to go to school either on a baseball scholarship, on a music and band scholarship, or an academic scholarship. My whole desire was, okay, I'm going to either get scholarship and band, sports, or academics. So when I set that goal, I started researching where are all the band scholarships, where are all the baseball scholarships, where are the academic scholarships. And so tonight, I want you to go ahead right now and set a goal. What's your goal? Is your goal to help your son or your daughter get into the right college? Is your goal to complete your master's degree and not have to pay another penny? Is your goal to uh, complete your PhD? Maybe your goal is to go to a certain school that's outside of the state. I need you to set your goal and ask yourself, what do you really want to accomplish? And as you set a goal tonight, I want to show you that there's gold in your backyard. Now, here's the equation to help you pay for college now. Here's your equation to pay for college now. As I before, before I get into this equation, uh, great, I want to look at some of these goals to reach the next stage of my life. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. 
uh, Nadia states that uh, she feels it's very important as a black young woman in this country to have her education. Awesome. To make my dreams and aspirations in life happen. Awesome. Daughters, why she wants to help the world be a better place. My short term goal is to finish my 46 credit hours to get my bachelor's degree in psychology. Awesome. 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 I love hearing about those goals. Now, I want to let this equation sit there in front of you. And I want you to write this equation, write it down in the chat room, write this equation down on a piece of paper, because this is the equation that will change your life. This is the equation that's going to help you identify how you can P4CN, pay for college now. Somebody in the chat room, everybody write this equation. Pay for college now equals GM plus OM plus YM. GM plus OM plus YM. Now you say to yourself, what is GM plus OM plus YM? Well, here it is. Are you guys ready? Drum roll. Drum roll. It's the government's money plus other people's money plus your money is how you pay for college now. The government's money plus other people's money plus your money is how you pay for college now. This is so powerful. And here is how I was able to pay for college by knowing this equation. The government's money plus other people's money plus my own personal money is how you pay for college. Let's talk about the government's money, the government money, right? Government's money. So here is a, a phrase that I want you to get to know. FAFSA. FAFSA. Free application of federal student aid. Free application of federal student aid. Now, here's a number that I want you guys to hear tonight. This will blow your mind. 2.9 $2 billion dollars, 2.9 billion billion, 2.9, almost three billion dollars was not used the last few years. In 2014 was not used. This is federal money that's out there. $2.9 billion. I just want this to sit here. $2.9 billion was not used where the government's money is concerned to help you pay for college. And the number one reason $2.9 billion wasn't used was because people didn't apply. Yes, people didn't apply. So if we want to pay for college now, government's money plus our money plus uh, your money, the very first thing the government's money is to apply for FAFSA. FAFSA, free application of federal student aid. This is the number one way to access some of this $2.9 billion. FAFSA, this is the very first step. If you don't do anything else to get $2.9 billion, it's FAFSA. Now check this out. Every individual that applied for FAFSA, the average amount they receive is about $5,600, about fifty-six dollars to $10,000, every person that applied, $2.9 billion. If you want some of this $2.9 billion, what you do is go to FAFSA, Free Application of Federal Student Aid. <laughs> I like what Kayla said, let me go do that now. Now, here are some rules on FAFSA. Here are some rules on FAFSA. FAFSA you have to apply for it every year in which you need the money. FAFSA has to be applied for January 1st, after January 1st of the year in which you would need this government money. So if you plan on going to school in the fall, let's say in, in August and September, then you're eligible to apply for FAFSA June 2nd, right? You're able to start June 2nd. And once you go to FAFSA, 
uh, fafsa.ed.gov. As you go to FAFSA, uh, it's just a simple application to have you apply so the government can let you know based on your income, based on your parents' income, how much federal aid, how much government money is due to you. $2.9 billion. The very first step to get access to this $2.9 billion that wasn't used or that's given out every single year is applying to FAFSA. This is the way you get the government money by going to FAFSA, free application of federal student aid. Now, uh, here are a few things that uh, tonight we won't go into all the details of FAFSA, but when you go there, it's all about taking this application, filling out completely your income, your tax return, and it's, it's absolutely free. The government just simply wants to um, identify, you know, what's coming in, what's going out, and what you're eligible for. Also, when you apply for FAFSA, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show you and give you access to pinpoint the other schools or the colleges that you're interested in. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to go to those schools, but it's giving you some opportunity to see, okay, here's how much money is eligible to you. So that now when you're looking at going to any of these schools, that that is uh, a possibility for you. And this is this is what the money looked like for those schools. So the very first way to get some of this government money and to pay for college now is to use the government money and apply for FAFSA. Now, here's the cool thing. No one wants to buy an ugly truck. Now, as we look at the second aspect of the equation, Government's money plus other people's money plus your money is paid for college now. Let's talk about other people's money. Now, when I think about other people's money, no one wants to invest in an ugly truck. Now, we've seen trucks like this. Now, this truck is to the extreme. You see there's paint all over it. There's a horn. There's junk on the back. Uh, look, looks like there are some um, pigeons on the top there. And no one really wants to buy an ugly truck. And see, here's the reality where school is concerned. No one really wants to invest or give money to students that don't look good. Now, I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about your report card, your rap sheet. If you want to receive other people's money, they want to invest in someone that looks good. So what I mean by look good, someone that has demonstrated that they are worth investing in. Someone that has demonstrated that, hey, I can get the work done in the classroom. I can get the work done in my major. I can get the work done. Now, this doesn't always mean make all A's, but it does mean do your best. Yeah, do your best. One of the, the reasons I was able to get so many scholarships is because not only did I market myself, but I demonstrated that I wasn't an ugly truck and I was worth investing into. So there are two types of money where we can consider other people's money. Number one is scholarships and the next is student loans, okay? Other people's money. This is money that's not yours, not the government's. It's other people's money. People wanna give you money. So I'm gonna give you 7.25 ways, 7.25 places to find other people's money. Now, again, other people's money represents scholarships, grants, and student loans. For the sake of time, we're not going to spend a lot of time on student loans. We're going to spend most of our time on scholarships. The reason why is this. Scholarships and grants, that's money that you do not have to give back. Okay? That's money that you don't, do not have to give back. Loans. That's money where someone gives you their money to hold for a period of time. A student loan, which now has interest. And as you go through school, they say, hey, you can borrow this money. But once you graduate, a period of time after you walk across the stage and get your degree, you're going to now have to pay that student loan back. So I'm going to show you 7.25 ways to receive some of these free money from other people and another time we'll talk about student loans all right here you go are you ready here we go here's the first one here's the first one look local look local yes the first place to identify and look for some of this local scholarships i'm mean, look for these scholarships is to look local 
There's gold in your backyard. Your school counselors, your college counselors, the admissions department, the schools that you're currently in right now, when have you taken the opportunity to go sit down with your counselor? When have you gone to your counselor and say, hey, do we have any scholarships? Do we have any money? Do you know of any resources that we have that can help me pay for college? I'm so surprised that the number of parents who don't get with their students to go to their counselor and just ask. You know, if you're a student on this call tonight, a student on this webinar tonight, and let's say you don't have the participation or the assistance of your mom or your dad or your guardian, go ask someone. And I know you're on this webinar tonight because you're asking me and I'm showing you and I'm saying, go look local. Yes, go look local to your counselor. Go to your college admissions department. Go to your principal. Go to your assistant principal. Ask your teacher. Look local. There's gold in your backyard by simply asking your counselors. If you're in, if you're in college, go speak to your financial advisors. Go find some, if you're in grad school, go speak to your research advisor. Look local, look all around you and ask those key questions. Number two, look online. Seek and ye shall find. Look online. So what I mean by look online, you can go to Google. Somebody says I like free money. Yes. Uh, you can go on Google and and somebody, you know, you can do this later on tonight. Type the word, let's say, for example, if you are left-handed, right? Go to Google and type scholarships for left-handed individuals. Google will help you find scholarships for left-handed individuals. If you are an individual and you want to go into a nursing program, look online. Scholarships for nursing students. Get online. Scholarships for African American women. Scholarships for fraternal twins. Scholarships for science. Scholarships for math, scholarship for engineering, scholarships for whatever it is. Look online, seek and you shall find. When's the last time you go into Google? If you haven't done this, get in the habit of doing this. Take your major or the field that you want to go into and add the word scholarships to it. And here's the cool thing about online you can type something in your online browser and simply put the phrase, I uh, put the phrase and put scholarships in quotation marks. Anytime you're searching on Google or Bing or Yahoo and you put quotation marks around the word, the search engine is going to look for that uh, immediately. Okay, so seek and you shall find. Here's another thing you can do. Look socially. This is so cool. Get on Facebook, get on Twitter, get on Instagram and use hashtags. Use hashtags. Hashtag scholarships. Nursing scholarships, STEM scholarships, PhD scholarships, master's scholarship, veterinarian scholarships, biology scholarships, business scholarships. You know, a lot of times we're on social media, we have these smartphones, but we're not using our smartphones smartly. Yes, use the power of the hashtag. Hashtags can tell you, you know, it's Throwback Thursday and it's this Tuesday and Man Crush Monday and Woman Crush Wednesday and what's going on with ESPN. The cool thing about social media is that you can use social media to get leads by using the appropriate hashtags. Number four way to find some of these scholarships is to look at your colleges. Seek scholarships at your desired college. Now, if, if this is good for you tonight, you know, we're here just a step forth. It's good. Let me know if this is good. I want to make sure that I'm not just talking to the air, making sure that you guys are getting this information. Let me know in the chat box that this is good. Okay? So, number one, look locally. Look online. Thank you. Look socially. Use those hashtags. And number four, 
what are the colleges that you desire to go to? Seek scholarships at those desired colleges. Yes, seek scholarships at those desired colleges. Now, let's say, for example, if you want to go to the University of Virginia, okay? Now, the University of Virginia, they have a financial aid department. And the University of Virginia, who's in the business of bringing students to their undergrad programs, graduate programs, and PhD programs, in this financial aid department, they have resources for scholarships. Go to those colleges and ask them. Go to the financial aid department. Also, on their websites, go to the college websites and notice some of the scholarship that they have on their website. If you want to find scholarships, look at the college. Seek those scholarships. Go ask the financial aid department. Go to their website. Oh, here's a cool thing about it too with your local college. If you can go to the website or even go to the college and you find a scholarship program at that college, it's also wise to seek out some of the students that are in that scholarship program. Yes, find those students that are in that scholarship program. These are the students and the individuals that are already getting the money at their college. Can you not reach out to them? Maybe you find them, reach out to them on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and have a conversation with them and say, hey, I see that you are a James Madison scholar. Can you tell me about this scholarship? Is this a scholarship? Is this just for one semester? Or is this, a, or is this scholarship um, used and received every single semester, every single school year? Can you do that? Think about it. It's just that simple. Look within your college. Here's the next one. I love this one. Look corporate. Now, what I mean by looking corporate, look at the corporations that you have in your life. Now, if you're a student on this call, or maybe you're a parent, students, think about what company your mom or dad works with. Think about what company your grandparents work with. Think about what companies um, your, your aunt and your uncle work with. Think about the companies that your friends and your family friends work with. Every corporation, not every, but most corporations, Every single year, they have a fiscal budget. Now, let's say if their budget was to uh, use $4 million within their corporation. And around the month of November, they realize that they're only going to spend about $3 million. So that they can reach their fiscal budget and require and request the same amount of money for the next year, they, they have $4 million in their budget. They're only going to spend $3 million. Now, here's the cool thing about some corporations. They want to use that extra a million dollars. Sometimes they can't justify giving the million dollars away in salaries. So now they use that money to give away to support great causes. And they offer scholarships. So here's what you can do. Go ask the company that your mom, your dad, your grandfather, your grandmother, your aunt, your uncle, your good friend, who they work for and ask them, hey, excuse me. Does your corporation have scholarships to support family members that work, family members and sons and daughters that work that are affiliated with this company? You will be so surprised to realize that they do. And sometimes they don't advertise about it because they want to make sure that the individuals that working, that's working for the company, that they can be a benefit to the students of those parents by now supporting uh, those individuals. So look corporate. They love to spend money for the budget's sake. Here's another cool one. Look in the community. I love it. This will be my best school year ever. Thank you, Hannah. This is good. Thank you. This is great information. Thank you, Danielle. Are you going to tell us where to find money to pay for college? I think that's what we're doing. Um, make sure if you're here, make sure you refresh the page to make sure you're live with us because we're doing just that. I'm showing you where this money is. Look throughout the community. Seek out organizations and associations that do what you desire to do. Look within the community. Let's take the nursing. Uh, a, let's say there's a, a man or a woman who wants to be a nurse. 
in your city, let's say the city of Atlanta, there are so many nursing organizations in the city of Atlanta. Go to those organizations and find out if they have associations that they support other nursing students. There's another cool example. Let's say you are in, uh, you wanna get a, a degree in business. Are there businesses within your community, look around in your community, look in your backyard, that have, um, they're associated with maybe Future Business of Americas, maybe they have a business association, they have a corporate group or a community group that sponsor and support individuals that want to go into business. Let's say like myself, if you want to go into the sciences, science, technology, engineering, math, let's say you want a degree in chemistry, are there other organizations within the community like the, um, the Chemical Society, of America, the American Chemical Society? Maybe you want to be a doctor and go into the medical field? How many doctor's offices, how many dentist offices, how many um, chiropractors are in our own community? And each individual that are part of these uh, within the community, a lot of times they're associated with other organizations. Seek out these organizations and do what that, you know, that do in line with what you want to do for your future and go ask them. Here's another one. Look Greek. Yes, number seven, look Greek. Seek out fraternities and sororities. Now, I want to make a confession. Now, if you're in the chat room and you are part of a fraternity or sorority, let me know. Or maybe you have found, maybe you have a friend that's a part of a fraternity or sorority. If you know anybody that's a part of a fraternity or sorority, let me know they're in a chat room. Yeah, let me know they're in the chat room. Now here's the cool thing, I am a black male. I received a scholarship from a sorority. If you know anyone that is a Delta, Delta Sigma Theta, guess what? One of the ways that I was able to pay for college now, pay for college free, I received a scholarship from a female sorority. I also received a scholarship from Alpha, uh, it was AKA Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. I received another scholarship from Omega Sci Fi. Fraternities and sororities do great work in the community. Why can't you go to the sorority and ask them about their scholarship programs? These are seven ways that you can do that. Fraternities and sororities. Here's another cool way look, crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is, um, Crowdfunding is a, a, a way now online where people are basically passing the offering bucket. You know, you know how it is. You know, I grew up in the church and we would pass the offering bucket every Sunday. When have you ever thought about developing an offering bucket or your scholarship bucket or your college funding bucket and passing the bucket to, excuse me, your family members, your friends? people that you know. Maybe you have never thought about designing a crowdfunding campaign where people can support your, your efforts. Now, if you do a great job of giving them a, bigger, a big reason why, you can set up crowdfunding and people now can start donating to, um, uh, to this area of, of crowdfunding. So I just wanna review these seven things real quick here. Look locally, look online. Yes, use the internet, use Google, use Bing, use your smartphone. There are certain apps. There are apps out there will let you know that they have scholarships. Look socially, use those hashtags. Look uh, within the local college. Let's say maybe there are four or five colleges that you're interested in going to. Go research those colleges and see what money they have. Look corporate, look community, look within the community. Look Greek, look and use crowdfunding, okay? Use crowdfunding. Now, those are seven ways that you can look for those scholarships. Now, what I wanna do here these next few minutes, I want to, uh, I wanna show you seven things that you can do, not only to look for the scholarship, but when you apply to get the scholarship. Now, before I get these seven things here, 
I uh, want somebody to let me know here. Um, is this good for you tonight? Is this good for you tonight? We right, we just hit the 60 minute mark. I'm gonna go about about 15 more minutes here, um, about 15 to 20 more minutes. And but I just want to know: is this helpful for you? If if this is helpful for you tonight, let me know. Somebody let me know in the chat room. Thank you. You know a lot of Greek individuals. Great, great, great. Yes, there will be a replay link. Uh, if you register for this webinar, I'll make sure I send you the the replay link. This will be your best school year ever. Thank you, Belva. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you for joining us, Kimberly. Uh, this is great stuff. Good stuff. All right, so we'll continue moving on. And see, here's the cool thing. When you know this information, it's now a game changer. These are practical things that you can do right now. You, you can step by step take each one of these and put together your plan to find those scholarships. Okay, so let's talk about real quickly here what you can do after you find the scholarship and it's time to apply for the scholarship. Now, here's the cool thing. You want to diversify your interest. What I mean by this is this. Sometimes you may be stuck on being a chemistry major. And you realize that there is a scholarship that's geared toward people in the medical field. Now, if you don't know this, a lot of people in the medical field, they have chemistry degrees, biology degrees, biochemistry degrees. And by you diversifying your interest, you're opening yourself up to look outside the box and not just focus on one target area, but position yourself now because you've diversified yourself to receive scholarships from other individuals, okay? Other associations, other groups, other interests. So diversify your interests. Um, and I say this because now, when it's time to look for the scholarship, how you can land the scholarship is by thinking outside of the box and looking outside of the box. Now, the second thing that you wanna do when you want to land these scholarships you want to increase your marketability. You want to be different. You want to be memorable. Here's the reality of the factor. Uh, here's the reality of the matter. You're not the only one applying for a scholarship. But one of the cool ways I was able to land some of these scholarships is because I marketed myself. Now, if you've ever noticed on any of my books, if you ever noticed on any of my courses, if you've ever noticed, even on this webinar, I show this picture a lot. Raise your grades in seven days. Seven, 7 7.25 ways to land scholarship money. Why do I do that? Because now I want to be different. I want to be memorable. I'm the coolest guy with 7.25 fingers. So now, what's different about you? What's memorable about you? So now, when you're applying for the scholarship, you're marketing yourself. You see, no one wants to buy an ugly truck, but if you can present yourself honestly and market yourself and be different, now you stand out to the decision makers. You see, finding a scholarship is just like finding a job. You have to go hunt for it. Hunt for the scholarship, now market yourself to land that scholarship the same way you would for a job. Number three, share your story. When you apply for a scholarship, a lot of times you have to complete an essay and you have to go in to um, write an essay, complete the application form, but you want to share your story. You want to let them see the real you. Yes, what's the real you? You know, hey, my name is, you know, Darius Johnson and I want to obtain a degree in chemistry. And to be honest with you, from the time period that I was six years old, I love working with uh, chemicals. And as I worked with chemicals in my high school class, I became the president of the science club. And not only that, my mom and dad, they gave me science kits and tool kits and I worked on chemistry experiments outside of the classroom. But you know what? I didn't do so well in history because I didn't like to read. And to be honest with you, you know, 
the, the Civil War, World War I, World War II, I really didn't do a good job in those areas. But I've learned the importance of reading now. I've learned the importance I could have done better. So you share your story. Listen, if you got a C, if you received a C in a certain class, keep it real and tell on your application why you received a C. But because we're marketing ourselves and we're telling the real story, you want to share your story. You know, I know a few individuals that there's a time period when they went through life and they had some family issues and their grades dropped during the time period, whether it's in high school or they were in college, their grades dropped because of family issues. Keep it real on your application. Keep it real with the individual and share your story. Let them know what's going on. Here's the fourth thing to land those scholarships. And this is... <laughs> This is powerful. Number four is to fill out the application. Duh, fill out the application. You can't win the lotto if you don't buy a lotto ticket. So fill out the application. Take the time to, once you find the application, once you find the scholarship, go print it out, fill it out, do everything they say, and market yourself. Next one, recycle and reuse. What I mean by this is that as you're going through the process of working on your scholarship application, uh, you're going to need some recommendations and essays. You want to get recommendations from those teachers, those counselors, those mentors that know you, those counselors and mentors and friends that can speak highly of you. And then let's say if one of your teachers write a, a great recommendation for you, make sure they write that recommendation where you can now reuse that same recommendation for another scholarship. So let's say if you find a scholarship with the sorority or fraternity, now you can reuse that scholarship, I mean, reuse that recommendation and support uh, the application for the, for the fraternity and sorority. And you can also use that recommendation for the college scholarship. Same thing with essays, recycle and reuse them. Here's another cool thing that you can do to get those grades up, or excuse me, get those applications to land to land those scholarships, excuse me, to land those scholarships to get their free money is get those grades up. No one wants to buy an ugly truck. I'm all about academic success. You know, I, I created an academic success course. It's called Plan Your A Game. It shows people how to become a 4.0 in school and a 4.0 in life. And, you know, if you're here tonight and you want some more academic help, I have a free ebook and a free course over at Raise Your Grades in 7 Days.com. It's my free study skills course, but um, you, it's important to get your grades up. No one wants to buy an ugly truck. So if you want people to give you their money, then it's important that you get your grades up and show them that it's important for you to invest, important for them to invest in you. Uh, number seven, let your light shine. Bring your personality and passion to the interview. A lot of times when you are applying for scholarships, they may call you in to do an interview. So when you have an interview for a scholarship or a fellowship or a grant, whether you're in um, undergrad, if you're from high school going to college or in college going to grad school, when you have the opportunity to interview with a school or a fellowship, then you want to make sure that your light shines. You want to make, that you, make sure that you bring your personality. You want to make sure that you bring your passion. And you do an awesome job that now you are uh, selling yourself to them because, again, you're marketing yourself. And um, there's another cool way there. Smile on your essays. What this simply means is that when you write an essay and when you're filling out an application and you're telling them who you are, keep it real because real people have real emotions. And these real people with real emotions, they're the ones that are reading your application. They're the ones that are reading your essays. So when I say smile on your essays, write your essays in, in, in such a way that when you write it, it makes you smile. And when the person reads it, it makes them smile as well, too. So these are 7.25 ways to not only look for those scholarships, but land those scholarships. Diversify your interests. Sometimes look outside the box. Look into other fields. Look into other areas that you may not, it may not be your first priority. But go search somewhere else to look outside the box. Increase your marketability. Be different. Be memorable. Share your story. Let them see the real you on your application. Share your story on your essay. 
When you need to get a recommendation, recycle and reuse those recommendations and essays. Get those grades up. No one wants to buy an ugly truck. They want to invest in individuals. They want to invest in uh, people who have demonstrated that they're going to use this scholarship money wisely. Let your light shine. When you have an interview, go in and be present, be passionate, and really sell your personality. Uh, and the 7.2 fifth way is to keep it real. When you write your essay, smile. Yeah, smile. Let them know that you're very passionate about this. So tonight, uh, I want to help a few people, and, and hopefully this has been very beneficial to you. Been very beneficial to you. So um, let me know as I continue to move. Uh, I want to answer some questions here in a few minutes. But I want to let people know. People always ask me all the time, Kentis, how can you practically uh, help me? How can you assist me with? Uh, you know, what I have going on. What can you do to assist me? Well, I have a course and it's called the Pay for College Now course. And the Pay for College Now course, it goes in depth where now I will help hold your hand. I will work with you, the student, your parent. I will work with you whether you are in high school as a parent and daughter, parent, son, going to college or you're in college and you want to go to grad school, or maybe you're in college, you want to find more funds, or whether you're, in, in your, you're an adult and you want to find more funding. Well, in my Pay for College Now course, I do a sort of hand-holding type of program that is all designed to uh, help you find the resources. So number one, um, the module in this hand-holding program is all about, it's a deep dive, and module one of this course is 10 tips for getting the most out of your college financial aid. I go in and I show you how you can apply for FAFSA, how you can get access to this government money. I show you what to say and how to apply. I show you where to send FAFSA and what to and to which schools. It's a strategy in getting the most money out of the government. So I show you this in this Pay for College Now course. Uh, the second module is all about scholarships. Again, I, I hold your hand and I work with you, practically keeping you accountable so that we can land those scholarships and look for those scholarships. I show you where to look. I show you how to apply and what to say. I show you how to market yourself so you stand out. In this uh, Pay for College Now program, the third module, we deal with student loans. We deal with when to take out a student loan and when not to. We talk about the student loan trap and how to avoid it. When, uh, when is it important and when is it good to defer your student loan? And when is a bad time to do the same thing? You know, here's the, here's the thing about student loans. Student loans, if you think about the last few years, we see more and more schools offering online degree programs. And you see it on television, in the newspaper, on internet sites. Everyone now is offering an online degree program. But they're also offering the opportunity for you to get a student loan. And But here's the cool thing about it. There's a trap with the student loans. And if you don't know, if you don't use this uh, wisely, where understanding the trap, you can end up getting a student loan and not knowing how to pay it back or not having a strategy to pay it back. I have a good friend. She's She's been out of school for 15 years. She has three college degrees. She's making, uh, she's working for a corporation where she's just make, you know, making enough money. But she has $250,000 of student loans. I know a doctor right now with a practice in New Jersey. Every single year they're enrolling in school so they can continue to defer their student loans. So I help show you and help work with you through this student loan process and bring in some of my cool advisors and friends where that's concerned. Uh, module number four of this Pay for College Now course, I show you seven ways to add money to your college account. Uh, we didn't talk about this earlier, but remember, the way to pay for college is the government's money plus other people's money, which is scholarships and student loans, and your money. There is a strategy where you can use your money to add money to your college account. So now, using the saving system and the investing system, you can now invest in your future. 
parents, you can't wait to the last minute to start investing in your son or daughter's college education. There's a plan. There are strategies out there. There are certain accounts. There are certain ways that you can put money, not only you, but your entire family can invest money per quarter, per month, early on, and now interest in the laws of banking, in the laws of return, will now position you to now use your money. Uh, module number five is the scholar card. This is where I help you market yourself to get the money, show you how to, um, what to do when you have a C or low grades, how you can market yourself to get those scholarships. And you know, honestly, no one wants to buy an ugly truck, but I'm gonna show you how to sell your ugly truck. Yep, that's module number five. Um, module number six of this scholarship program is um, personal mentorship for me of a program called Cantus Academy. Cantus Academy is all about, uh, it's a monthly mentorship where now you have access to talk to me on an ongoing basis. Uh, every single month, twice a month, we have a live call where you and other people get together in a group. And in this group, we answer your questions. So in this Pay for College Now program, we have, it's all about government money, how to get the government money, how to land those scholarships, how to look for them, how to land them, uh, what to do when it's time to take out a student loan, if you need a student loan, how we can avoid some of these traps. Uh, we go into detail to show you a strategy on how to use your money. Uh, we talk about the scholar card, being able to position yourself to market yourself to get those scholarships, and you get one-on-one uh, -on -one access in my student mentorship program called Cantus Academy. And uh, tonight, you can register for this college funding course, and uh, you get access to all of those for only $297. Now, if you go to this link, cantissimmons.com forward slash 297, uh, you get access to this full course, this full module, where week by week, month by month, in this um, six month program, we're working with you to make sure that you apply for FAFSA, that you apply and you position yourself, you know what to put on the application to get things done. You also um, are able to find the scholarships. I help you when scholarships come into my office, those that are part of this Pay for College Now program, you get first um, tabs on these scholarships. You know, I get emails all the time and I want to send them to my people. Uh, student loans, being able to market yourself, as well as being able to land those scholarships. So tonight, if you're interested in having me help you personally work through this college funding course, it's just a simple $297. Now, here's the reality of it. An investment of $297, think about how much money that you can save over your lifespan or your college career if you have someone that's done it that's can, that can help you. Because the reality is this, you know, it's like what, 30, about $38,000 on average per year to go to school in some schools. But what if you had a scholarship? You know, that's why I love my mom and dad because it's like I was so blessed to be able to have them not be able to pay any money. You know, later on, you know, we didn't know all the things we know now, but my sister, she had to pay for student loans. She's still paying student loans. My brother has some student loans. Maybe you have some student loans. Maybe you know someone that has student loans. But I want to be able to help you and serve you where that is concerned. And also, uh, as an added bonus, uh, for those of you who have not heard of my Plan Your A-Game course, um, this course in itself is 297 itself. If you would like access to this course, and it consists of six modules already where you can go in and get access to the 7.25 things to uh, stay motivated in school, like go through how to have the right mindset in this Plan Your A-Game program. I talk about your learning methods. What's your learning style? I talk about this muscle called study and showing you that in these modules and how to develop proper study habits so that you can succeed in school. I even have a module there that's all about managing your time, 
how to focus in school and be free from distractions, how to test, how to master exams. And if you would like to participate in that academic success program, if you want to register for the college funding course and the academic success course, you can get both of those for four ninety seven. Now here's the cool thing with this program here for the college funding program, uh, you can wait, make one payment of two ninety seven or if you like, you know you may not have two ninety seven tonight that's fine. If you want to invest in your future, you can make monthly installments. So if you're interested in just getting the college funding course, it's simply two ninety seven. Uh, just go there and uh, go to kantasimmons.com forward slash 297. You can see uh, that course there. And if you like to, you can make installments, four installments of $99. You can start off today and then, you know, you can stretch this thing out of the next three months. If you say, hey, Cantus, I will like your uh, college funding program and your academic success program, then you can easily invest in your future as well. Just go to CantusSimmons.com forward slash 497 and uh, let me know how I can be of benefit to you. So now what I want to do here, I want to go over in the chat room. And if you have any frequently asked questions, I want to be able to answer those questions. Any questions you may have in the chat room, let me know how I can uh, assist you. I'm going to be here for the next 15 minutes. My uh, next 15 minutes being able to answer your questions. You know, if you again, if you want to invest in this, simply go over to CantusSimmons.com uh, 297 for the college funding course where you get um, the modules on government money, scholarships, student loans, your money, scholar card, also access to my student mentorship program for 297. If you want access to both my college funding program, my academic success um, uh, program, you can do that for $4.97. Or like I said, you can make four payments of only $99. Hey, if this is right for you, you know, there's no pressure, but I just want to be able to serve you. So, um, so I have a question in the chat room. It says, how soon can a student begin to apply for scholarships? Thank you. Um, uh, hey, Miss, that's my, I don't know if that's my cousin, my play cousin, uh, Miss, Sam, is it Samantha or Samantha? How soon can a student begin to apply for scholarship? My daughter is a rising ninth grader. Is that too soon? No, it's, it isn't too soon. The reason why is, because, is that things are becoming more and more competitive. So what that simply means is that uh, starting as a ninth grader, begin to start asking yourself certain questions, begin to narrow down what schools, what fields you want to go into. Also, because of this, what that looks like for you is that now as a ninth grader or a 10th grader, you are beginning to network. You're beginning to developing your resume. Remember, remember I talked about no one wants to buy an ugly truck. So now what you're doing is that as a ninth grader, 10th grader, you are being able to now sell yourself and you have a plan. Not only that, but we see here in the, um, in the equation, the government's money plus other people's money plus your money, uh, as a parent, you can now begin to develop a strategy to lay aside money to invest in certain types of accounts that can now help you and assist you on uh, paying for college. So it's never too early to start. Uh, here we go. Yes. Do you have information about how to pay back? All right. Do you have information on how to pay back student loans you have already borrowed? Yes. So here's a few things that you can do, and I can't go into all the detail tonight, uh, but there are a few things you want to do with student loans. So number one, listen, man, student loans are tricky. You know, a few years ago, we had this whole housing market collapse. And uh, one of the, the cool things about the housing market, you know, people were able to file bankruptcy. People were able to foreclose to get out of that, that house or that, that mortgage. 
But the trap is with student loans is that you can't foreclose on a student loan. So here is some simple advice. And actually, in my Pay for College Now program, we have some case studies of some individuals that work specifically with student loans and showing you specific strategies that you can now apply. So number one, you want to be able to uh, make sure that your student loans are, that have, you've been able to negotiate and either consolidate your student loans or get a low interest rate on your student loan. Uh, there are some programs, uh, the President uh, Obama, uh, President Obama, <laughs> President Barack Obama has some scholarship programs that basically says this, if you're working with a certain uh, industry, let's say you're working in education, and this is a service-based career, if you're able to make consistent payments over 10 years while working in that field, consistent payments, after the 10 years, they will wipe out those student loans. So if you can hold down a job and consistent consistently make those payments over a 10-year period, then there is a, a, um, a plan to be able to wipe that out. I know a lot of educators who maybe uh, a good friend of mine, she, you know, she told me she can't have $300,000 of student loans. She has a bachelor's in education, a few master's degrees, a few PhDs, but $300,000 of student loans? So she's working on this plan where she's able to hold down this service-based job for 10 years and be able to make consistent payments. And after the 10 years, they will wipe that out. All right, another question here is, I have received some mail offerings on loan forgiveness. Is this legit? Yes, loan forgiveness uh, at times can be legit. The key thing that you wanna do is that you want to ask a lot of questions. And in my um, college funding course, we actually go through um, that, break that down. And the module that deals with student loans, we go into practically what can be done. Also have some interviews with some other experts who work in that area. And now we can look at those letters to say, okay, um, what can we do here to knock that out? Here's another question. It says, I'm a senior. Thank you, Kayla. Kaya. She says, I'm a senior trying to go into fall semester of college. Is it too late? No. Kaya is no, it's not too late. Number one, as soon as possible, go ahead and complete FAFSA. Go to FAFSA website, free application of federal student aid. And um, by going to FAFSA, apply now. It's never too late. You know, go through those seven things now. Look, you know, here's the reason I say it's never too late. Almost $3 billion of money was, wasn't used. Yeah, three bit. I know people who would register for college. And when they go into college on day one, they didn't have the funds. But sometimes they take a little time for those monies to process. And after a few weeks, the money has showed up because they've been aggressive about it. So if you're on the call tonight, if you're on this webinar and you are a senior, it's, it isn't, it's never last minute to look for money. It's never last minute. I would advise you take each of these slides, you take each of these points and go look in those certain areas. Apply for FAFSA, uh, get that free application in. Go ahead now and look at those local colleges. Go ahead now and spend the time being able to uh, do your work, go in and be able to really investigate. It's never too late. If there are any more questions, I um, want to answer those. I'm going to be on here about eight more minutes. Eight more minutes. If there are any other questions, let me know. I'm just breezing up. I would like information on the ebook. Yes, um, there's a free ebook over at Raise Your Grades, the free study skills ebook, Raise Your Grades in Seven Days. There we go. I'm trying to type in the chat box and talk at the same time. 
raise your grades in seven days.com. If you, you know, like to register for the course, cantorsimmons.com forward slash 297 or cantorsimmons.com 497. Let me know how I can serve you. This was absolutely amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Thanks for the information. Thank you, Shanna. Where do you go to apply for grants? Dr. E, you go, you do the same way, the same thing. So what you want to do? Uh, grants and scholarships are about the same. They're money that you don't have to pay back. So to apply for a grant is sort of the same way. Rather than going to type in a nursing scholarship, look for nursing grant. If you look at using those hashtag, use local grants. Um, because you're here, here's a great resource. And thank you for staying on the call. If you can find this resource in your library, it's called The Blue Book. The Blue Book. It's like the encyclopedia of um, the encyclopedia of scholarships. It lets you know every school, every organization that has scholarships, and it breaks down those scholarships. Now, this book is so big that uh, you, you probably can find some of these books online. You know, I would recommend you buy them because they're always updating. Check your local library for the Blue Book. And the Blue Book is a place where now you can go find grants, you can go find scholarships, you can look for fellowships. You can find those internships. You can find those organizations that that um, that support that. So the Blue Book is a great resource. Another place to look, you won't believe it, is Amazon.com. Amazon.com. They have some great resources there on how to find grants. The Blue Book and Amazon.com have some other resources where now you can find some of these books. Great stuff. Uh, I have another question here. If scholarships are attained for graduate school or other degree areas more than what you need, can those monies be applied to repay previous student loans? Uh, great question. And the question is, if you have scholarships obtained for graduate school or other degree areas more than what you need, uh, can you use those monies for, to repay previous student loans? Now, here's the cool thing about scholarships. And you want to ask these certain questions. Uh, for example, you want to be able to ask yourself, question number one, is this scholarship a one-time offer? Meaning, are you only able to get this scholarship during uh, one semester? And number two, what's required to get this scholarship every single semester? Am I supposed to uh, keep my grades up? Am I... Uh, supposed to maintain a 3.0 average, a 2.5 average? What's the, the minimum GPA? Also, will the scholarship be sent directly to me or will the money be sent to the school that I'm attending? Sometimes, in most cases, they will send the scholarship, the grant, the finances uh, directly to the financial aid department that you're working with. Now, here's the cool thing about it. The reason they do that is so that you don't mess over the money, all right? You know, so they send the money to those departments. Now, you want to keep up with it and keep track of it. So now remember the equation, the government's money plus other people's money plus your money. So the government's money through FAFSA, anything you can get from the payroll grants, anything you can get from there, do that. Anything you can get from scholarships, work with that. Uh, if you have to stick out a student loan, which I really wouldn't advise, but if you have to, that's a part of other people's money and then your money. The key thing is staying organized. Now, I've had a situation, and I know of situation with some students that I work with, where let's say you get a scholarship for $500, and they can send that scholarship directly to you. Now, you can choose to use that scholarship on books. You can choose to use that scholarship on um, some of your uh, room and board, whatever it may be, how you choose to use that money that come into you, you can use it there. 
So the key thing is being wise with uh, how to use that money. Any more questions? Uh, scholarship or grant money? Scholarships and grant monies, they work about the same, okay? Uh, they're both, they're grants um, and scholarships. You both have, you, you have a, re a certain type of requirement. You have to do your part to maintain those scholarships and grants. My daughter received a scholarship yesterday. Awesome, congratulations. That's what I'm talking about. I love to hear stuff like that. My daughter received a scholarship yesterday at an event at Morehouse. That was her question as well. Yes, so if you get a scholarship, it's money. Be wise, if you get a scholarship, don't put the money in your pocket to go, you know, pay your cell phone bill. Put the money aside so that now you can use that to pay for college now. All right. Any more questions here? Any more questions here? Live from the call again tonight. If you want to invest in the uh, college funding course or the um, academic success course combo and the college funding course, simply go to CantusSimmons.com, 497. Or if you want to make um, monthly payments on this, it's $99 a month over a period of time. If you just want the college funding course where I go hand by hand to work with you, then uh, simply let me know. And I would love to assist in that area. Screen sharing, let's go back over to my camera. Yes, again, I want to see if we have any more questions. Um, you say the slides are blurry. Make sure if you're on here tonight, refresh your screen. Refresh if it's blurry. Thank you. Again, thank you for those people that stayed on the call. Danielle, welcome to the call. Thank you. Shannon, thank you. Belva, thank you. Tell your mom and family I said hi. To Cousin Simmons, thank you. Brianna Reed, what's going on, Brianna Reed? Hello, uh, Frederica Rogers, NSU. Is that my Frederica Rogers? NSU in the house? Yes. Thank you. Kimberly, thank you for being here. Thank you for staying on. Michelle, thank you. Sarah, Dr. E, thank you for being so awesome. Uh, Marion Johnson, thank you for being so awesome. Hey, if you guys would, I would love to connect with you. If you're on Facebook, Twitter, social, whatever it is, Instagram, I am at Cantus Simmons on all social platforms. Just let me know what you got out of this call today. Another question real quickly, and I'm going to take two more questions. This is going to be tonight. If you have a degree and owe on a student loan and scholarships and grant money still available, I was told if student loans are owed, free money was not an option. Well, that makes sense. Think about it. So if you still owe a student loan and money comes in, the whole goal is that the money that comes in is used now to take care of the student loan option. So uh, you, you, you're going to be going to be very wise on that. And um, like I said, we're going to uh, do more of these how to pay back student loan sessions because there are a lot of people who are dealing with student loan debt. It's amazing. And I've realized that that's a huge problem and I'm going to do everything I can do so that you can say bye-bye <laughs> to student loan. So uh, thank you for asking uh, that question. I'm going to be here for five more minutes. Good stuff. Thank you, Cantus. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for always uh, jumping on. Awesome stuff. Well, again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me at CantusSimmons.com. Also, let me know on social media uh, what you receive from this. What you thought about this program again, I'm at Cantus Simmons. Want to hear your testimonies, want to stay involved with you. Awesome information. I went to NSU as well. I was a freshman, though, when you were there. Marion Johnson, NSU, well, congratulations. Woo-hoo, behold the green and gold. Uh, Marion, where are you living now? And thank you, Marion, for the email. I appreciate that. I think it, what's up, Frederica Rogers Sneed? Actually, I was in Virginia. Two weeks ago, I was in Farmville, Virginia, 
and I was actually tempted to drive over to Norfolk State, but I wasn't able to make it, and uh, so we're super duper cool. Now, oh, by the way, if you guys, you know, not only need my help with scholarships, or you know that maybe your school or your department or organizations want information like this, just let me know at cantorsimmons.com. This is what I do. I travel to schools and um, cities, and I help individuals like this. Cincinnati, Ohio, great job, Marion. Uh, like I said earlier, I'll be in Cleveland next week. I'm going up there to speak at a few schools, and uh, I know Cincinnati is far away from Cleveland, so maybe one day when I get to when I get to Cleveland, we can hang out and talk and chat and have some good stuff. Good stuff. Thank you so much, cousin, for your time. Great session. Listen, I'll be around um, for a, a few more minutes, and um, if you have any questions, just you know, hit me in the chat box or send me an email at cantus at cantussimmons.com. If you would like to participate in the uh, Pay for College Now funding, uh, college funding program, simply go over to cantissimmons.com forward slash 297. If you want to, the combo of the academic success program with the college funding program, simply go over to cantissimmons.com forward slash 497. Of course, with both of those, uh, I'm going to walk you through step by step hand by hand, through videos, through weekly calls to make sure that we're on the road to help you pay for college now. So thank you guys so much for being on this call tonight. If there's anything that I can do to be a benefit to you, um, just let me know. I'm so honored that you've taken your Sunday out to hang out with me, Cantus Simmons, the coolest guy with 7.25 fingers. And remember this, if there's anything that uh, you want to do in life, you want to play your A game because there's only one guy, game in life that counts, and that's your A game. You guys have a good night. I'm going to end uh, this live feed. I'll spend a few minutes hanging around the chat room, answering any questions you may have, but thank you guys so, so much, and I will see you soon. All right? Talk to you later.